Hi, I'm Shannon from houseimprovements.com. In the video today, I want to show you the most, the five most common cuts that most people will do with a circular saw. Before we get going, in case you've never subscribed to our channel before, please click the subscribe button below and uh, also the bell icon to set up your notifications. And of course, smash the like button. So the five cuts I'm going to talk about today are the rip, the plunge, the cross cut, the bevel cut, and uh, cutting notches. So those are the five I'm going to cover. I'm going to start with a rip cut. Now with the rip cut, there's basically uh, four different common rip cuts that you're going to do or be able to do with a circular saw. And in case you've never seen our circular saw video on how to use it and adjust it and everything, check that out. We'll put a link in the description and I think somewhere around here there's one on the screen. So when doing uh, rip cuts, that's when you're making a long cut on basically any kind of material, whether it's two by four, plywood, whatever. Um, so you can use the, the guide. Some saws come with the guide or you can purchase a guide with the saw. And they hook right on the saw. You can measure your, your distance for whatever you need to do. And basically that guide just runs right along the end of the, of the wood. So I'll just show you that one here first. Uh, something else I should do is adjust the depth of my cut. I don't need the blade sticking too far through the wood. So that should be good. And also always be sure of what's underneath where your blade's going to run so you're not cutting a cord or your table or your workbench or whatever. Okay, so here we go. Circular saw using the guide. Okay, so that generally will get you a pretty straight cut. It's just following whatever that edge is you're running it along. Okay, so that's one. Now another one we can do is uh, using my finger as a guide. So, you know, let's say I just want to take, I don't know, an inch off of that piece of wood. I can give myself a mark right on the edge where I'm going to start. I'm just going to slide this over a little bit so I'm not cutting the table off. So then I can just basically get my saw in position and I can eyeball the blade up on the mark that I had there. I'm not sure whether you can actually see that. And then I can use my finger on the edge of the saw. Actually, it'll be better on a little less of a cut there. Let me go a little less. I said an inch before and I marked like inch and three eighths. So let's go a little smaller because I need a bit of room to get my finger on there. Now you can see my finger, if I stay up in this range here, is still well away from the blade, but only do this if you are comfortable with it. So line my blade up with the, with the mark I had, depending what I wanted to do. And then I basically make sure my saw is straight with the edge, if I'm cutting straight. And I use my finger here as a guide, just pinching right onto the, the shoe of the saw. And part of my fingers up against there as the guide. Now with most of these, one thing you have to watch is once you get out to the end here, like out here, and obviously my finger is no guide anymore, so you need to be kind of progressing along and already, you know, kind of have a small, uh, uh, smooth flow to your cut. Okay, so that's that one. Then uh, kind of what I call freehand. So maybe you're going to mark yourself a line here with a square or just a straight edge or whatever. Okay. And then uh, same idea as the finger cut. I want to basically get myself lined up on whichever side of the line I had determined I wanted to go on. And I'm just going to visualize where my blade is here and there's a notch in the front shoe of your saw right here. Once you've used your saw a bit, you kind of learn where you need to be as far as the, the line showing up in your guide. So you're, you're basically starting out here with the blade at that mark and getting this lined up on the line where you want to be. And once you are, you can get start progressing. And normally if you're doing a long cut like this, I'm just watching up here. I'm just watching as my saw moves along that line. Some people will just keep watching right down here, right where the blade is. And uh, I guess something else to mention is your circular saw actually might have the blade over here. Mine's just the opposite. I find it more comfortable to cut with. 
but uh, really all these functions are the same. Okay, so that's just the free hand, basically, freestyle, if you want to call it that. Now, uh, the next one I'm going to show you would be with uh, using a straight edge. And I actually have a really, uh, really good video for this as well, already uploaded. So uh, if you want to see the, the full details of that, just go to that video. We'll put a link again on the screen here somewhere. But basically what you want to do is you want to have your material clamped down to the wood or sorry your a straight edge clamped down to the wood now you can use anything that's straight so uh, like I said I've got more details in the in this other video so if you want to check that out but I'll just give you a quick demonstration on how this works so I'm just running the saw along that straight edge Okay, so that's the most common cuts you're going to do when you're ripping material with a circular saw. Now the next thing I want to talk about is a plunge cut. So let me just get a couple things out of the way. Now with a plunge cut, you might have uh, you know a hole or something you need to cut out of a, a piece of wood. Uh, maybe a hot air register hole in the floor, in the plywood of the subfloor something like that and you need to basically get the saw started in there to make that cut. So what you're going to do is set your your depth to what to uh, what you want to do or the thickness of plywood you're cutting and you're going to I don't have my finger on the trigger or anything but I'm moving the guard up so I can drop the blade down here so I'm lining up the blade down here near my line whichever way I want to cut from the line and again I'm using that notch at the front just so I'm getting myself basically straight with the with the line that I have marked there so then what I want to do is I'm going to rotate the saw up and I'm still holding the guard up so it's not you know down in the way so I'm holding the saw up so the blades off the wood then I'm going to start the blade and I'm rotating pivoting on the front of the shoe and I'm just going to lower the blade slowly in now you have to be careful, uh, most times it's not going to do it, but you need to be aware that because of the rotation of the blade, the saw is going to want to do that if it catches a, a nail or something that you're not aware of. So you just need to be prepared for that in case. So, so I'll just get myself lined up here again, and I'm going to do the plunge. Now once the blade's through, I can stop the saw and everything's good. I can recheck if I need to, make sure I'm still running where I want to be. Everything looks good. I can move ahead and finish my cut. So I'm, as I'm cutting, I'm going to be watching through here where my intersection is and I'm going to stop before I get there. Okay. Now you can see my cut start started right here and it isn't all the way back to where I want to go so I can just reset myself again and plunge in back to that point. Um, when you get really practiced at this you're going to find yourself just plunging in and you're going to let the saw cut backwards. That is dangerous so I wouldn't recommend that right off the start. If you get comfortable enough doing it maybe you want to try it but uh, I don't recommend it. So I'm just going to re-plunge in a little further back. Okay, now I can also just come this way and go to that cut and stop. So now if I was going to cut this square right out, I won't do the whole thing, but I'll just show you what I would do on this side coming up to here.
So I stopped just before I got there. Now I could just simply take a little Japanese saw or a little jigsaw and finish that out and do that on each corner and that centerpiece would drop right out of there. Okay, so plunge cut. Okay, the next cut I'm gonna show you is the cross cut. So when I'm talking about cross cut, I'm uh, mainly talking, you know, when you're cutting some lumber, you know, I wanna cut this two by four off or whatever. So again, you got a freehand cut where you've got a mark and you're just simply, just simply following that line by eye. Like that. Or maybe I've got a cut here and I'm gonna use this uh, speed square as my guide right against this part of the saw. So I can get my blade lined up to my mark that I marked, slide my speed square over to it, start the saw and make the cut. So that's just ensuring that I get a nice straight cut there, nice and square. Okay, so that's cross cutting. Um, now bevel cut. So I don't think I've ever seen a circular saw that the shoe isn't adjustable on so that you can cut any kind of angle that you want to, right? Okay, so you adjust your angle to what you want. And same thing, it's the same two cuts I just showed you. Basically you can uh, freehand following a mark or use your speed square. I'm not gonna put a mark there, I'm just gonna do this as an example, but basically uh, using my speed square for this one. Okay, so simple enough, pretty sim similar to the cross cut, just with an angle on it. Okay, so we got that one out of the way. Easy enough. Get these out of the way. Now let's say uh, you've got some type of item here and you want to put a, you want to get a notch in it. Maybe you've got some plumbing or uh, something that needs to run through a joist or something and you're going to put a notch in there. And this is what you want to cut out of there. Well, you could get go and get your jigsaw and mess around and get that all out of the, all cut out of there, but you can do it just as easily, honestly, with the circular saw. So you want to just set your depth of the blade for the depth of your cut. A little awkward for me to see what I'm doing here. We'll say that's close enough. Then I'm going to use my speed square again, just as a guide, because because I want my cuts nice and straight. And I'm basically going to make a cut on either side and then a bunch of little cuts in the middle just to clear that excess out. So let's give it a try. Check my depth. Yep, looks all right. So you can see I'm just moving over a little bit every time and making a saw curve, saw cut. You could make them all where you make them side by side and get rid of every little piece. Or you can leave some in there and just take a chisel or your hammer and just simply knock those out. And then depending on how perfect you need the bottom of that to be, you could take a chisel after and clean it up. Okay. So I think uh, I've created a lot of dust, a little bit of noise, but I think I've showed you pretty much fairly effectively how you could make those five cuts and the variations of each one of them with your circular saw. Be safe. Your I guess so. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. <laughs> All right. Do we want to re -cut, redo that or I kind of moved now, but. No, that's fine. Okay. I don't know where that came from. Just kind of.